So if you are someone who is on social media on a regular basis, you will come across memes, these little posters that get posted there. Uh, and oftentimes it will say something cute like, uh, a priest, a rabbi, and a pastor walk into a bar. Uh, and then in these days when there are so many forces in this world that would divide people of faith and communities of faith, these memes, these little internet posters that you share on social media will say, that's it, there's no joke. Uh, you really can hang out with one another, get to know one another, uh, and it can be a moment of peace and joy and reconciliation. There's, there's no joke, there's no punchline. That's the point, is coming together in fellowship. Uh, Rabbi John Linder, who is the senior rabbi at our sister congregation, Temple Solel, just down the street, uh, south of Lincoln here in Paradise Valley, came to uh, Temple Solel about the same time that I came to Ascension. Uh, and he has been an unbelievable blessing to that community as they have continued to do the ministry of Shalom in this time and place. But he is also a commodore among our local clergy. Uh, so there is something very beautiful, and you can tell the spirit is something up to something really delicious when the person who is most effective at wrangling Protestant clergy, who tend to be like kittens when it comes time to hurting them, we tend to be of the chaotic sort, there's something very special when the Spirit of God uses the local rabbi to rally the troops. Uh, so Pastor John, is, oh, I'm sorry, I just uh, switched you over from the Marines to the Navy, I'm sorry. <laughs> rabbi John, uh, Rabbi John uh, is uh, a friend, a friend to this congregation, uh, and we are so delighted to invite him and to invite his amazing wife, Nancy, to be with us today. And I know that we have friends from Temple Solel who are with us in the assembly this morning, so a special word of welcome to all of you as well. Brothers and sisters, would you help me to welcome my friend, Rabbi John? Peace to you, Rabbi. Good to see you. Peace. So first of all, when Butch closed the, um, uh, the gate, um, I thought that I was either going to have to uh, do a high hurdle over uh, or just uh, go all the way around because when a rabbi sees a pig, I, I just want to put some money in it, so excuse me. <laughs> I, I couldn't help. <laughs> That's called low-hanging fruit. <laughs> uh, so I do want to say a, a word or two about uh, my friend and my pastor, Ryan Hirsch, and uh, Dean Jane Baker, uh, that we, we really do strengthen one another, and uh, in particular, uh, during these uh, divisive times, uh, many minority communities uh, under siege one way or another, uh, that certainly the case with the Jewish community with uh, swastikas and our uh, Hanukkah menorahs being desecrated, uh, threats to the community. Uh, your pastor uh, went to the Jewish Community Center uh, this was maybe within the last month, uh, to make sure that your congregation was representing, giving a message to the Jewish community uh, that you are with us. And uh, I can't tell you how much that means to me personally, as your friend and uh, Jane, I know that this represents both of you. Uh, and, uh, and it is my message today, as you'll hear, that we really are um, in it together. Uh, so in this fifth 
week of Lent, preparing for, uh, for your promise of Easter, how perfect, Dean, Jane, for you to read the words of the prophet Ezekiel and his vision of the resurrection of the dry bones. As I'll be speaking about this morning, I believe that we in our respective faith communities, bound together by serving the one God in heaven and earth, can expedite the coming of the Messiah. We do this by our outpouring of love and kindness in the world. Um, if you'll indulge me, uh, let me teach you a song drawn from the words of the psalmist. So the Hebrew words are olam chesed yibane, translated as all existence is built on love and kindness. Um, so as this catches on, and maybe it will, join me. Olam chesed yibane da 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 Olam chesed yibane da 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 I will build this world from love da 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 and you must build this world from love da 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 and if we build this world from love da 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 then God will build this world from love. Da 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 da. Olam chesed yibane. Da 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 da. Olam chesed yibane. Da 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 da. Thank you. As the story goes, a group of travelers are in a boat in the open waters when one of them suddenly pulls out a hand drill and begins drilling a hole under his seat. Incredulous. The other travelers turn to him and say, what are you doing? And the man responds, what concern is it of yours? I'm drilling a hole under my seat. The others shout out in unison because we're all in the same boat. What I love about this story, which, which comes from the heart of Jewish tradition, is that we don't know anything about the passengers on this boat. Are they Jews, non-Jews, a mixed multitude? Well, we simply don't know, and that's precisely the point. As a rabbi, I understand Jews are not only obligated to our fellow Jews, we are obligated to the whole of humanity. I'd put my ordination on the line that Pastor Ryan Hirsch, Deacon Jane Baker, and Ascension Lutheran Church are not only obligated to Lutherans. As the story goes, we're all in it together. Of course, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't embrace what makes us distinctively Jewish and Lutheran. On the contrary, 
I would argue that the more connected we are to our respective faith traditions, the more powerfully and lovingly we can be of service to all of humanity. This morning, brothers and sisters, I invite you to look with me through a Jewish lens, what I view as a biblical paradox. Jews, I would argue, are people of faith who stand with one foot in the particular and parochial, and the other foot in the universal and expansive. So here's our particular. Jews are referred to as Am Kodesh, a holy people, literally set apart from the other nations, distinct and, yes, some would say even chosen, as is the nature of tribes, we instinctively care most deeply for our own. The special covenant God made with our patriarch Abraham established our separateness from other peoples. Our rituals from birth through death reinforce our distinctive Jewish identities. And here's the universal. The biblical authors had a different vision for this nascent Israelite tribe. Our ancestors understood the perils of protectionism, of nativism, of cutting ourselves off from other tribes and nations. The Israelites were also conceived in empathy to feel the suffering of others, to always remember the most vulnerable, the orphan, the widow, the stranger in our midst. Our core narrative is the Exodus. We are to remember the stranger. Why? The answer echoes from generation to generation around the Passover table. For we were strangers in the land of Egypt. Uh, so here's a little sidebar promo. Uh, on the 9th of this month, two weeks from today, one week from today, um, we're having an interfaith Seder, and for any more information you want about it, um, please come and talk to Pastor Ryan Hirsch. <laughs> to be a Jew is to be expansive, to care for both those within the Jewish family and those outside. This brings to mind the experience of my friend and colleague, Rabbi David Stern, who in a Darfurian refugee camp some years back, made an observation. He observed the simple numbered band used to measure the circumference of a child's arm. If the measurement is too small, the child is malnourished and in need of medical attention. Applying this symbolically to our engagement both inside and outside the Jewish community, Rabbi Stern asks, what's the measure and circumference of our moral concerns? How widely are we willing to care? He observed if the circumference of our attention our compassion, our outrage is too narrow, then the kid is in trouble, and so are we. Moral expansiveness, of course, is not the exclusive domain of Jews. Take, for example, the small southern French village of Le Chambon in France, during World War II. As documented in his astounding account, lest innocent blood 
be shed. Historian Willa Paley writes of the bold moral leadership of Protestant pastor Andre Trochme and his wife Magda. One night, a young woman knocked on the door of their presbytery. The woman braced against the bitter wind and nearly frozen to death, identified herself as a German Jew. She asked if she could come in. The pastor's wife, without hesitation, opened the door saying, naturally, come in, come in. The Trochmes felt commanded to live the biblical words to help their neighbors in need. Caring for someone outside your tribal, religious, ethnic, or national group is surely a form of heroism. Doing so at the risk of your own life, all the more so. This heroic act of opening their door and caring for a stranger, for a Jew, fleeing for her life, inspired thousands of others to open their doors in this southern French village. Andre and Magna Trochme led this small community of 5,000 inhabitants, as well as the surrounding villages, to secretly shelter over 5,000 refugees, including 3,500 Jews, over the course of one year. They did so at their own grave peril. The measurement of this little village's moral courage is off the charts. They, along with thousands of others, are recognized as the righteous among the nations, as the righteous Gentiles among the nations, at Israel's Holocaust Memorial, Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. Putting one's life on the line, as Andre and Magna Trochme and the villagers of Le Chambon did, is a tall order. I have, brothers and sisters, never put my life on the line. Not honestly, not honestly sure if I could. Not looking to test myself. What I strive to do as a rabbi is to challenge my community to stretch ourselves as everyday heroes to think about how we can open that door to another, to broaden the circumference of our everyday heroism on both sides of the biblical paradox, within the Jewish community as well as outside. There is an expression that embodies the, the particular commitment that Jews have towards one another. The Hebrew expression is kol aravim ze All Jews are responsible for one another. It is my guess that Gilad Shalit is not a household name within the Ascension Lutheran Church community. Yet, yet you'd be hard-pressed to find a Jew who doesn't know this name. Gilad Shalit is the Israeli soldier who was captured by Hamas in June of 2006. The world Jewish community did not rest until Shalit was returned. We all prayed alive. During that time, I traveled to Washington, D.C. with one of the lay leaders of Temple Solel, we carried hundreds of personal prayers of hope to Galit, to Gilad, that were collected within the Solel and throughout the greater Phoenix Jewish community. 
we joined a delegation of Jewish leaders to meet with the CEO of the International Red Cross, beseeching them to report on Gilad's well-being, to personally deliver our messages and those from Jews around the country directly to Gilad Shalit. After 64 months in captivity, over five years ago, Gilad Shalit was released with his freedom, and Jews around the world breathed a collective sigh of relief. One of our brothers returned home alive. Jews help Jews in dire straits who have fallen on tough times. We celebrate with one another. We mourn with one another. We do our best to care for one another. We are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Caring for fellow Jews is what we do and who we are. Excuse me for a moment. I do not have a cold, but being here uh, is moving to me. Then there's the Jewish mandate to care for others. The Bible expresses this in many ways and more frequently than our parochial obligations. Remember the stranger, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You shall not remain indifferent. When we forget our covenant with God as a holy people or misunderstand the notion of chosenness as being exceptional in any way, the prophet Amos channels God saying, To me, O Israelites, you are just like the Ethiopians. True, I brought Israel up from the land of Egypt, but also the Philistines from Kaftur and the Arameans from Kir. In early August, I traveled to Berlin as part of an American rabbinic delegation. The purpose of the trip was in part to witness the remarkable work of an organization called ISRA Aid, an Israeli NGO, which is working with the German government to help resettle some of the over one million refugees, mostly from the Middle East. Because most of the refugee population speaks Arabic, Israel has assembled a staff that in and of itself represents an interfaith tapestry with German and Arabic-speaking Jews, Christians, and Muslims. So let me tell you about one of the German volunteers I met. His name is Gerhard Bader. He's a member of the Berlin Jewish community. Each week he travels from one side of this sprawling city to the other to volunteer in one of the refugee shelters. Mr. Bader is 88 years old. Mr. Bader is a Holocaust survivor. Gerhardt, a diminutive man, shared with me his two simple reasons for volunteering. First, he is well aware that most of these refugees come from Arab countries in the Middle East where they have been raised to hate Jews and detest Israel. For most of the refugees, Bader is the first Jew and surely the first Holocaust survivor they've ever met. Their human interaction immediately challenges the propaganda they've been weaned on. Bader humbly serves as an ambassador for the Jewish people who has not lost 
hope in the goodness of humanity. Secondly, as a Jew, Mr. Bader feels an obligation to reach out to the most vulnerable. Gerhard Bader, a giant of a man, is surely a hero. The depth of his moral courage and faith in humanity is immeasurable. At a time when the rhetoric of fear and xenophobia dominates news headlines, the public square, and I dare say our nation's capital, the Solel community drawing strength from the likes of Mr. Bader, Andre and Magna Trochme, and the little village of Le Chambon is striving to serve as a holy people. Thank God we're not going it alone. Members of Temple Solel, Ascension, Lutheran Church, and the Islamic Center of the East Valley have come together to form the Abrahamic Collaboration to welcome the stranger. This wouldn't have happened without the Lutherans. Through Lutheran services of the Southwest Refugee Focus, a local nonprofit organization that provides resettlement and immigration services to new Americans, we had the honor of gathering at Sky Harbor Airport last summer to greet our first refugee family to Phoenix. So first of all, you should take great pride that your very own Deacon Jane Baker serves as chair of Lutheran Services of the Southwest. Um, maybe you've had the same experience as I with Deacon Jane. When she asks you to jump, you just say, how high? That's Deacon Jane. Due to the generosity of time and resources of our respective communities, our Syrian family was able to step foot into a fully furnished apartment with cupboards and refrigerator brimming, closets and dressers full of clothes, car seats awaiting their children, and many touches of TLC from our volunteers, our everyday heroes. Not unlike all of our families' journeys to America, our adopted family's journey began in a distant land. Four years ago, fleeing for their lives from the tyranny of Syrians' authoritarian repressive regime, they crossed the border into Jordan. There, the young couple, Ahmad and Anud, lived in a refugee camp outside of Amman, where their two sons, Abdul and Mohammed, were born. After three years of undergoing the vital, rigorous scrutiny of U.S. security vetting, the family was cleared to make their next leg of the journey to Phoenix, Arizona. Imagine, just imagine the difference in circumstances for this family. Fleeing their homeland, leaving behind the harsh conditions of a refugee camp to be greeted by complete strangers in an unknown land where they were instantly connected through our common bonds of humanity mutual kindness and respect. Ahmad, Anud, Abdul, and Mohammed knocked, and we, we opened the door to America saying, come in, come in. A belief our respective faiths hold dear, and one that was expressed in unison at Sky Harbor that August evening 
is that to save a life, to save a single life, is as if you saved the world. As children of Abraham, working together, we saved more than one that night. Fortunately, when we act for the welfare of others, we derive great satisfaction. When we give of ourselves, we're richer in return. This, this could be one of the saving graces of humanity. I believe our very survival depends upon it. In two weeks, you'll be celebrating Easter while your Jewish brothers and sisters will be celebrating Passover. Lutherans and Jews, each in our beautifully distinctive ways, looking for the day when the world will be one and at peace, eager to usher in the messianic age. Yet, I think we'd all agree, we don't bring God's kingdom down to earth by standing on the sidelines. God is depending on us to roll up our sleeves and dig in as messengers of peace in our day. So I say, let's double down. Let's double down in our commitment to our respective faith communities. Then, standing together, hand in hand, may we deepen our connection with one another, embracing the diversity that surrounds us. At the end of the day, brothers and sisters, we're all in the same boat. I invite you to stand, and if we could, if you've got that slide from the beginning of that psalm, uh, we'd, we'd love to be able to just standing together. Now that you know it, <laughs> and the choir is tuned up, please join me. Olam chesed yibane da 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 Olam chesed yibane da 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 I will build this world from love Ta da 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 And you must build this world from love Ta da 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 And if we build this world from love Ta da 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 then God will build this world from love. Da 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 da. Olam chesed yibane. Da 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 da. Olam chesed yibane. Ta da 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 da. God bless. Let's bless God for our brother and partner in ministry, Rabbi John. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much.